oh wow we made it back to the island and i found jack yeah oh i god, went off what? on a little journey and oh i my came god. back with nothing no i lost my boat again. nothing oh yeah. no again again i did get some Honey. italian food though oh so. good yeah no good. did you have did you have to organize colored balls on a table that then just got flown off into uh, the ocean? You'd be shocked. It was actually pasta dishes that I ha had to organize like that. Uh, uh, complete mess. And then all it. of that food was wasted before I could eat any of it. No. Yeah. It, I, I don't know how they passed that through. But, like, hey, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, no, it's I'm not fine. hungry. Everything is fine. Me. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Anyway, anyway. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Cup TV, part of the currently unnamed podcast network where we put the real and the tea in reality. And you can always come to us first to quench your thirst. I'm Logan Murphy. I say something gay. Gay. I am currently, I've got some water and I'm drinking some green tea. Ooh, okay. Uh, because I love green tea uh, and Lana's not here, so I won't get ridiculed for drinking green tea um but what i also have is a cup mug Ooh. and jack and i are sporting the og cup mug but you can go get the new and improved cup mug at lanagecreations.se.com that link is in the description below and we do ship domestically within north america and internationally so there are no excuses unless something major is going on in your country which is a lot of countries in the world currently then there are some excuses yeah and my name is Jack. I am very much back from a small little hiatus. I am your lovely game and immersive experience designer of the panel. Uh, and for the essentially double header of the episode we have today, I have first some water for the basic Great. ass boat. Yes, of course. And then, you know, I tried very hard. Read, I went to one gas station. Uh, yep. to find uh, San Pellegrino. Uh, couldn't find it. But <laughs> I found something that I honestly think is potentially better. Uh, and okay. it is New York flavored apple seltzer water, which I mean, if you're gonna go for an Italian, you're gonna go to New York. So it, it counts, okay? It was either that, that or just plain water. That sounds great. I'm not even going to lie to you. That sounds really great. Um, But yeah, we took last week off because life is lifing currently. Um, But we're back. We're going to talk very honestly, very briefly about episode 11 um, of Survivor 47. And then we are also going to dive into episode 12, which I think might be one of my favorite episodes of Survivor ever. Yeah, no, I mean, this was just a very episode 11 was extremely standard uh and it was really kind of just a oh well i mean i guess and then immediately followed by at least a top five episode of the new era if not very close to the top agreed i would absolutely agree with that and we're going to dive into all of that. But before we do, make sure to subscribe if you've not already, because we're here almost all the time, giving you almost all things reality competition TV. Uh, we've got a couple of other fun things on the horizon for the new year. We've got Trader US, very excited. Um, we've got a couple of seasons of Australian Survivor on the horizon as well. And then obviously when Survivor 48 comes out, we'll be covering that as well. Um, and make sure to check out the description below where you can find all of our audio podcast links, our other YouTube channels, and our Patreon for exclusive content and early access. So... Episode 11 is, like we said, a very standard episode. Um, there's more of the Caroline and Sue dialogue that we'll talk about it. doesn't matter anymore. Um, we get a journey at final eight, which I don't love. Um, yeah, no, it's really strange. I mean... I like, I like the what ended up happening, but I was like, why are we yeah. doing a journey at eight? <laughs> Yeah, I will say, I mean, we do get this episode a very clear break into a majority, which is called yes. the underdogs, and then everyone else. The How creative. 
What? How groundbreaking? What uh, privilege? Underdogs are not major. You don't call yourself an underdog, huh? A little, a little confusing on the name, but um, we do have basically sides of Andy, Rachel, Sue, Caroline, and Teeny. Yep. versus essentially a collective of everyone else being Sam, Genevieve, and Kyle. Just The main game player from each tribe. Yeah, it's a little okay. strange. Yeah, and that is literally just the dynamic that runs this episode. And um, the next. Yeah. Well, and the next. Eh, and the next. It. It, yeah. We'll talk about it. Um, so Rachel ends up going on the journey. She, instead of going to, you know, a mountain, a beach, no, she's just on a barge in the middle of the ocean. Um, and she has a ball puzzle, basically, where she has to, it's like a life-size version of those, like, weird ad games that you get uh on most apps where you have to organize things by color um this is my competition this is the comp that i want this is the comp that i need this is my comp like i'm very good at this i and i don't know about any other comps but this comp i would be on it i cannot imagine the fucking production meeting that had to happen for yeah, so for our final eight big thing, we want a puzzle that uh -huh. has a timer that you are uh -huh. throwing weights off of a barge and that's your timer and you you don't have it exact, but you know it's going to eventually be pulled off the table. And the puzzle we're going to do is sorting colored balls. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Huh? What? <laughs> Slow the fuck huh? down. <laughs> you had me. And then it's just like, ah, uh, okay. Uh, and uh, I cannot believe that that is actually what happened. And I mean, I I, I know the point of it is essentially not worrying about the puzzle, but it's instead basically not panicking and not losing your cool yeah. because realistically, anyone could do this puzzle in the amount of time, but the real element is you're hearing shit fall behind you. You know that you, it's going to be ripped away from you. Yeah. Uh, so it is a thing of just getting it together, which I don't mind it is it's kind just of genius. I'm not going to lie to you. It's kind of genius. It's just a weird fucking way to do it. And then the best part is that Rachel almost failed it. That's the best part. The girl who's been like dominating comps in the end game. And she almost loses it. Uh I, it, for me, this was like I, I think I think there is an ingenuity to the puzzle itself. Um, it, like you said, it's really about don't. It's really about not panicking. Um, this also, for me, very much so felt like okay, we're gonna hand fist in this twist that we've been wanting to put in all season. Here we go. Let's see and if we can do some basic stuff to get it done. Yeah, and it's a fun new twist. It's a block of vote. And the person won't know that their vote is blocked until they go up to tribal. And we haven't seen it played yet. And I'm pretty sure we have to see it played next week. So next week is going to be a very interesting tribal. Um, but she does get it. Uh, she goes back. We get our immunity challenge. And it's the classic stack the immunity blocks to spell immunity with the rope. All that kind of stuff. And they all sucked. Yeah. They all sucked. Well, wait, was it that? My brain is going back and forth on like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. But, I mean, there is something slightly important that happens before that. 
Uh huh. That's what I thought. I was like, okay, I'm looking at the wrong episode to like just remember what the fuck happened during this. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was like, wait, no, we didn't talk about this. No, it's because I'm looking at the wrong fucking thing. Um, so I do have to say that we have given up in the previous episode basically the major twist of Survivor. Episode 10 being oh, there's no more shots in the dark. We're playing basically standard Survivor at this point. Right. Which has made the game a lot more, at least in my mind, it's ended up being more flexible and people are more willing to pull off crazy shit. Which, uh, surprise, when you don't give everyone a shot to basically be like, oh, and I'm just going to fuck up your plans randomly. Yeah. Uh, you get actually good gameplay. Shocker. Anyway, but yeah, I mean, everyone kind, especially in this majority alliance, just looks around and goes, I mean, we have to snipe Kyle if we can get it, right? Right. And everyone goes, yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. Maybe we'll consider Genevieve, but like, Kyle makes more sense. And then we have immunity. Yeah, and pretty much everyone sucks at the immunity. Um, we get crossfade after crossfade after crossfade. Um, and ultimately, it's uh, it comes down to basically like Kyle, Teeny, and Rachel are the three that are the most the most proficient at this challenge. And Rachel pulls out the win. Oh, okay. Okay. Period. Come on, queen. Period. Good for you. That's my draft team. Work, queen. Yes. <laughs> um, and as you were talking about earlier, um, the conversation after Tribal basically just goes back to... Let's get Kyle out. And Genevieve Ooh. does her absolute best to convince Teeny to take someone else out. They ain't doing it. Yeah, do I math mean, and uh, yeah. yeah, no, I mean, this episode's conclusion really was foregone. Basically, the only person with an actual idol, Sue, uh, has been hunting Kyle since the beginning of the game. So, I mean, because as we talked about a couple weeks ago, he wrote her name down once. <laughs> He wrote, he wrote her name down. And that's it. That's all you need to piss off Sue permanently. He wrote, forever. He wrote her name down. He wrote her name this down. Woman, this woman with her dirt contour will not get over the damn fact that Kyle wrote her name down once. And I mean, I partially don't blame her, but on the other hand, I'm like, really? This is her entire storyline for this season, and I am just... At this point, I've accepted the fact that Sue is making Final Tribal Council, and it really just frustrates me. Oh, uh, Sue is making Final Tribal Council and is getting no votes. It's it's basically a foregone conclusion at this point. I really... Yeah. I, I struggle to see any scenario where she gets votes other than the remaining people on the jury... Uh, re the remaining people next to her piss someone off so badly that it is not, it is less of a vote for Sue. It is a vote for not the other two. And I, it's literally that. a vote for not Sue. Yeah. Or it's a vote for not them as opposed exactly. to a vote for Sue. Yeah. Um, anyway, Kyle goes by. Oh, no one's was, surprised. He was nice. And he was really nice. I'm, I'm actually really disappointed in the fact that Kyle went home. Like he's, he's a very nice guy. He was a very refreshing character for this season. I really didn't know what to think of him going into the season. Um, and I found him very wildly refreshing and, you know, his energy will be missed. And if he's the person that, um, Jeff keeps teasing about potentially being on Survivor 50 from this cast. 
Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, that's that's a very. I think it is probably a good chance that he is the one that comes back. I mean, there's been all this talk of we want positivity and we want people who don't have a chip on their shoulder. Uh, and that is Kyle at this point. Yes. Uh, it is basically like, hey, we saw that you essentially walked out with grace. You just played to your heart. You were essentially just a challenge beast that knew that their time was eventually coming. And do I necessarily like that in a player? Not really. Not I'd rather always. you play the game, but also he couldn't really play the game at all because he was winning too much. Uh, yeah. So I think if he just attempted to lower his threat level at any point, he could have popped potentially won, but it just it didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. But Kyle's great. Kyle's lovely. Kyle's a wonderful person. All right, let's talk about episode 12. Um titled Operation Italy. Yeah. I genuinely believe, Jack, we are going to be talking about Operation Italy for years to come. Like, oh, I feel 100%. like Operation Italy will be referenced in future seasons of Survivor. Yeah, no, I mean, this is genuinely, I think, one of the best manipulations of advantages and fear and also using advantages in other ways. And there's a lot of smart gameplay in this episode that I was surprised by, but really, really worked. I agree. I agree. So we come back from Tribal. Um, everyone's like, oh, Kyle. Oh, no. Anyway. Oh, no. Except for uh, Miss Dirt Contour over there being like, I finally got him. I'm like, shut the um, and then we, we cut to the next day and we get this moment of Caroline and Sue are talking about how they're running the game and that no one else has realized it. Um, and that is the moment I realized, cool, one of them is going home. It's probably not Sue. Got it. Thank you. Like it's, yeah. it's maybe the most telegraphed we've seen an elimination. Like this is in the first five minutes of the episode. I would say that potentially the Banu was more telegraphed oh, than this. Well, okay, sure. But yeah. this is this is probably like the most obvious, like, oh wow, we're on top of the world. Nothing can take us down. This is gonna be so easy. Right. That we've seen in a while. And in a while. Yeah, no, it, then... it's not easy. And even then, when it came to Tribal, I was still surprised. So, I mean, mm -hmm. they did something right. But, um, but yeah, we see Genevieve apologizing to Andy for discrediting his game last week. And this is kind of, this this episode brings in a very nice um, arc into uh, Genevieve's narrative for the entire season. Um and Genevieve is talking to Teeny, saying that Rachel is her new target. Um, Rachel needs to go. And amongst the um, the Operation Italy crew, um, Rachel should be the one to go because she has the biggest. She is the biggest threat. Um, Teeny talks to Rachel and tells her that Genevieve is actively targeting her. Um, but Rachel's fine because she has a block of vote advantage and she has an idol that literally no one knows about. So, whoops. If yeah. anyone's good, it's her. It's Rachel. Yeah. If anyone's good, it's Rachel. Um, and we go right into a reward challenge. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a pretty easy round, other than, I mean, the five 
who are the underdog alliance going, we did it. Yay. And yeah. also uh, Genevieve also pulling Teeny aside. And that conversation does not go well. Uh, in fact, it goes horribly to where uh, Genevieve and Teeny's relationship is essentially just shattered. Uh, completely and shattered. I mean, I will say, as much as I am on the Teeny train forever and ever, Same. this is a horrible episode this is a teeny. bad this is a bad episode to be a teeny fan not even gonna lie to y'all not even i i, I love fail teeny. to see how she can win at the at this point i fail to see how they can at all do anything it's over at this point at this point for me and we'll talk i'll talk i'll bring i'll touch on it briefly at the end for me at this point i think there are only three people that can win yeah yeah no that's very fair um and we'll talk about it but we get a reward challenge um it is a pretty standard uh obstacle 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 throw balls onto a perch um so we're shoving over sandbags and then we are um grabbing this second ball crawling under a net throwing two balls onto raised perches um this is where we find out that uh, the winner will get an overnight trip to the sanctuary with Italian food, a bed, and it is the Love One letters, um, obviously, since they stopped doing the Love One visit, um, which I'm still depressed over, but it's fine. Um, I'll get over it. It's fine. I'm fine. Um, and it's pretty close for a while. Uh, Rachel was out in the early lead um sam catches up most people catch up by the end of the challenge um ultimately sam wins and this is where it gets interesting this is where it gets really interesting jack because he we find out ends up get, getting to pick two people to go with him and the variety of reactions amongst everyone is kind of wild. No Liz, yeah. no rumored uh, millionaire Liz Wilcox level explosions, but still entertaining. Mm -hmm. We do have the first pick of Andy because yeah. Sam had said, hey, if I ever get a reward, I'm going to take Andy. And he follows through. That's fair. Love you that. know what? That Love is that. completely fair and a reasonable thing to do. No one's arguing with that. No one's upset at that. Cool. Well. We do have the second choice. Uh-huh. And because she's Italian, Genevieve. Uh, you know, on, on paper, on I paper, mean, it's the right choice. On paper, Sam and Genevieve need to convince someone to flip, and they've decided that Andy is the most likely person to flip out of everyone. The only problem is that everyone else is pissed. <laughs> Every well, other yeah. person is pissed. I mean, I don't think Rachel ever expected to be picked by Sam. I don't think really Caroline ever expected to be picked. Um, Sue and Teeny are annoyed. Uh, and when they get back to camp, even before they get back to camp, they are actively discussing with Jeff how this was a one bad move and two essentially sunk their games, which yeah. is a lot of confidence to do before a vote in like 36 hours. 
Yep. Especially when you know that sanctuary visits are normally fucked in some way and they get some sort of advantage. Uh, but uh, it's very clear that the underdogs are now pissed off completely, which, okay. Party. Party, exactly. Like, I, I get it. I absolutely get it. Because I've been teeny, and I understand what teeny is going through. The outburst, I couldn't help but just laugh the whole time, unfortunately. Yeah. Like, this is pent-up anger that they've been holding on to for days. Weeks, even. Specifically against Sam. Kind of against against Genevieve, but specifically against Sam. Yeah. I, just to be clear, I was like this close. If I talked to a couple other people to go into the early screening for this episode, because this fucking close. It was like maybe 30, 45 minutes. I should have Uh... because I would have died. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, no, this, this ends up being a major sticking point, but also is the first bit of evidence of like, oh, Sam and Genevieve are completely fucked and they, they can't win now. Oh my God. It's over for them. Laying it on as thick as possible. But I mean in a fun way. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Um, the four of the underdogs that are not uh, on the reward are back at camp. Teenies, obviously, shit-talking Sam. Um, they decide to ultimately lock in as a final four. Um, it's all women and teeny. Um and they're going to go to the final four with all women and teeny. Um, and I love that. I love that for them. Um, do, don't love that it's Sue, but love that for them. Um, and meanwhile, Andy, Sam, and Genevieve concoct one of the smartest plans I've seen in the new era. Like, there's yeah. really no other way to... There's no other way to to describe it like it is it is an absolutely genius plan andy i mean one they were absolutely correct in selecting andy to go uh Mm -hmm. because he woke up that morning and said yeah i kind of want to chose violence (laughs) he woke up and said i am not about to be in the final five with four women and I get it. I get it also because uh, Andy has been seen as a very weak player the entire season and he needs something. The optics don't look great. <laughs> the optics the don't optics look great. Actually look, the optics actually look really bad. <laughs> but from Andy's perspective, I do understand it because the only person left from his original tribe is Sam. So the only person that he has an extended relationship with in this game at this point is Sam. So I understand the move. Well, Rachel. Yeah, I was about to say. Wait, like, am I miss? Am I miss? But he never about really Rachel? had a. He never really had a game relationship with Rachel. The yeah. only person who he has a game relationship with is Sam. So coming back over here, and then he's liked Genevieve. Genevieve just apologized. And is opening up to him. So I understand why, you know, he he made the shift that he did. Um, and he decides to present the plan to um, feign like he is still in the majority alliance. Split the vote on the opportunity that one of the two between Sam and Genevieve has an idol. Flush the idol potentially and vote out whoever between the two of them it was going to be sam basically um and the way all of these moving pieces come together you have genevieve 
putting together this fake idol so that she can fake that she has an idol, but she doesn't. You have Andy talking to the majority, like making sure that he's on the the right side of the split vote so he can flip. Like all of these things come together in such a beautiful way. Like this is one of the most eloquently strategized moments of the new era. And this is what happens when you remove the threat of a shot in the dark. You get gameplay that feels like old, this feels like an old school survivor move. And I love it. (laughs) Yeah. And there is also a nice hint of actually using advantages in multiple ways. Sam has been holding on to this idol for literal weeks, weeks at this point. And he's like, use this, just change out the beads from tree mail, which is so smart and works so so brilliantly. Yeah. And then, I mean, the entire point is to show the idol quickly and then put it away. Uh, If there's a parchment, we're going to try and use the old parchment, but we're just going to hope it never gets there. Uh, But, of course, this plan is very risky, and we get into all the risks a little bit later. But, I mean, the primary thing is making sure that they can target Rachel. Because as long as Rachel is still on the board, it's fine. Yeah, and uh, the other important part of that, too, is that Andy did tell Sam and Genevieve about Rachel's block vote. Mm -hmm. So that is why they decide, okay, we're going to target Rachel. Done. Um, And we go basically right to the immunity challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, So we are uh, balance beaming with a ball on a pole. Um, They have to use uh, this, like javelin thing it looked like something from american ninja warriors or not american ninja warriors um american gladiators um or love island games because they like the big hit some the you know what i'm talking the thing. yeah the to thing you all not, you all watch the episode presumably you know what i'm talking about skull just, it was a maze almost where you just had to knock skulls forward i loved this i never oh, i loved it so before. much i was like i was like oh i love this Especially Hello. because it gave us a fourth moment of Andy thrusting during a challenge this season. Thank you. Thank you, producers. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. My uh, my main eye candy is on the jury, so I only get to see him for about 15 minutes of, out of an episode. Thank you. Um, and then you have to use, um, three small balls, uh, to balance, unbalance all three of them on a flat plate with some narrow dimples. Um, this is a pretty cut and dry challenge and really only one person is wildly successful at this challenge. Yeah. Everyone gets through it pretty simply. Yeah. Uh, but only Rachel can land the balls on the paddle and keep them there. No one even else gets one on. Rachel wins. And Operation Italy it has lost shifting. its target. <laughs> and is now in the shift. Yep. Uh, as Andy verbally says, all right, well, then who's the target now? And that is basically all of what the prep for tribal council is. Uh, the underdogs seem to think that they're going on with this three, two split plan to take out uh, Sam with Sam Genevieve. And, yeah. Kind of plays out perfectly from Andy's part. Yeah. But <clears throat> Teeny does push back and is like, no, we should probably just be piling all on Sam. Which 
she isn't wrong, but it's more know. risky, especially as Genevieve flashes the idol mm-hmm. to Teeny and plays yep. it off beautifully. Which, I mean, once again, it's just incredible work. It's, it's so nice. It's so nice. I, it's masterful. It really is just masterful how this goes down. Um, we also do see, we do hear Sue, uh, talking with Rachel and Caroline, um, saying that if she has a bad gut feeling at Tribal, she will play her idol for Caroline. And Rachel also contemplates using her block of vote, but Andy does ultimately convince uh, convince her that she should probably just use it next week. And for Rachel and Sue's games, you know, it's best case scenario because they both still have their advantages. Because neither of the advan none none of the three advantages at play are played. The plan goes to, off. Yeah. It, if I any mean, of them it's... were, it would have imploded and um, been worse damage yep. to everything. But now they... I mean, they're still fucked next round. Like, there's very little anyone can do. Oh, we'll talk... Yeah, we'll talk about it. Um, But yeah, the plan goes off the way it's supposed to, it's two votes Sam, two votes Genevieve, two votes Caroline, and the last vote comes through, and somehow in a 3-2-2 vote, Caroline gets voted out. Wild. I genuinely cannot believe that it went through. I can't believe it worked. So, just to be clear, if and so we start with this. If Teeny hadn't been convinced of the idol, things could have fallen through. If Andy hadn't gotten to the right side of the of the votes, it fell through. Mm-hmm. If Sue or Caroline were spooked at any point, it fell through. If Rachel was alerted at any point that it was going wrong, she had two different ways to make it fall through. Yep. And none of them happened. I do also want to specifically point out right before the votes are played, Sam whispers over to Genevieve, play it. And Genevieve specifically goes, I'm okay with the outcome. So, if they're smart, this fake idol could have leverage during final six. Yep. So, they don't have any actual power, but it is... They're not fully out. No, I am... And I I will say, I think Caroline has been a great player this season. She took it very well. Um, obviously, because she's a game player. Like, she respects the move. And I'm glad that she did, because it it was it was a great move to see. I'm sad to see her go, but, hey, it made for a really entertaining episode. But let's talk about what we have going on next week, because essentially, Rachel's safe. Sue is safe. Genevieve or Sam could be safe. There's a high likelihood Rachel might win immunity again next week. No one's talking about Andy. Quite honestly, I don't see how Teeny makes it through the next tribal. Yeah. 
Um, but like genuinely, uh, if we come back next week and Teeny is the person voted out, like it will not surprise me in the slightest because genuinely, I don't know, unless they throw another advantage in, which I doubt they will, I genuinely don't, unless Teeny wins immunity, I don't know how Teeny makes it through the next tribal. I can see a path. So realistically, if Rachel doesn't win, she probably idols herself. Absolutely. Which no one else knows about said idol. So yeah. it could take people by surprise. And in that case, I could see whoever Rachel votes for probably goes. Yes, I agree with that. However, everyone also knows about Rachel's block of vote. So I feel like people aren't going, I feel like there's going to be an alternate plan that's made where mm -hmm. people are like, well, we know Rachel's going to play the block of vote. We might as well try to keep, you know, two on someone. And I feel like Teeny is going to be the person that they, they end up going after. Which Especially because sense. it's not even the first time that Teeny's name has seemingly been thrown out as a, I don't know what the plan is. Kyle yep. voted Teeny on his way out. Yep. Which I still don't understand because we never got any clarity on that. Uh, yeah. But obviously there was some sort of plan that Kyle was told to vote for Teeny and it just didn't work. Or but, he just through a vote like i yeah. in case of an idol like i don't yeah we didn't really ever get any clarity on that but yeah i mean going into final five so here here's where my brain goes immediately mm -hmm. would sue idol rachel at final six i don't think so i also saw that as a bit of a probably not especially because she was a lot closer to caroline i don't see that scenario for rachel there's a potential way that she makes it through to final four always being safe which would be really impressive but don't think it's possible. But now I, I think next week we're just going to see all of the advantages played and we're just going to have to see what happens. Who do you think still has a shot at winning the game? I think the only three people that could win at this point are Rachel, Genevieve, and Andy. Yeah. And in terms of ranking, Rachel above Genevieve, above Andy. But, I, I mean, this episode did shift it a little bit. I disagree. Okay. I think it's Genevieve, Andy, Rachel. I really think we're just getting this narrative arc with Genevieve... Either Genevieve wins the season or Genevieve's coming back for Survivor 50. Like, there's no in-between for me. Um, I just think with her getting this narrative arc in this episode, and we didn't even talk about the loved one letters, but her getting the loved one letter um, and, like, Sam asking her at the sanctuary about um, closing herself off and her talking about the whole situation with the Keyshawn vote, I just feel like why set up all of this narrative for Genevieve if Genevieve doesn't win. But I also feel the same way about Andy. Actually, I think I would say Genevieve, Andy, Rachel. Is that what I said? That's what I said. Yeah, no, that's what you said. That's what I said. Because I don't feel like Rachel has that narrative arc. I don't feel like we've gotten to know anything about Rachel and her journey on Survivor other than her going on a journey last week. I feel like at this point, it's probably either just Genevieve or Andy because we've gotten such interesting narrative arcs from both of them on this season. So, and I, I think, I think the only other person that's had a good narrative arc is Teeny, but I don't see Teeny winning at this point unless they went out 
Uh, and honestly, that might happen. So if that happens, yeah. great. I would love for Teeny to win. But, but I don't see it. I don't see it. And I think if Teeny were to win at this point, it would feel like a Gabler win where it's, wait, what? What I would. I don't think happened? a teeny. I don't think a teeny win would feel like that. Only because teeny has kind of been both in and out of majorities throughout the season, and so there's been this like narrative flow to what teeny's done. If Sue wins, that's a Gabler win. And honestly, if Sam wins, that's a Gabler win for me. Yeah. I. I very much fail to see at the moment how Sam can win the game just because anytime he's basically made a move, it's always been under Genevieve basically or, or under it's Sierra under Sierra. Yeah. He's always been the meat to someone else's brain. So there's it, I'm, I'm failing to see a case in which he wins, but I agree. If you think Regardless. I'm wrong, Comment. Let us know in the comments. Yell at me. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know who do you think is going to win at this point. I think if I had to predict a winner at this point, I'm going to say Genevieve. My mind is going to Andy, potentially. All right. Only because I think Rachel might get picked off and we've had too much Andy content recently. I feel like Genevieve ends up going in fire. That's just my gut. Got it. Okay. Okay. Well, um, with that, uh, we didn't talk about it last week because we weren't here, but Lana is actually out of the draft. Oh? Lana's last draft member was Kyle. That would do it. So, um, Lana is out of the draft. Eduardo, with Caroline going home, is now down to just Sam. Uh, Jack is still dominating, still with three people. Um, and, uh, I, I'm still holding on with a Genevieve and a Rachel in a dream. And I think I have the best shot of winning at this point. So we'll see what happens. Regardless, this is going to be an interesting end game. We've got two more episodes, I believe. Uh, yes, of, this is uh, a weird two part finale for yeah, some reason uh, yeah we start the we start the finale next week and then we're doing it's just top six next week and then we're just doing it the same way we've always done it where it's top five to the end i believe really i think so i don't know i i don't, I don't they know specified that i don't know i don't remember if they specified that in it doesn't matter whatever it, doesn't it is matter. we'll be Whatever it is, we'll be back next week to talk about it. The penultimate episode of Survivor 47. Uh, this season is really, like, slow burn into wildfire. And I've loved every moment of it. So, Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, let us know all your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining us for this Survivor recap. Uh, subscribe, like, and share on the way out. We are trying to grow the TV channel. Uh, we've got a lot more fun TV stuff coming soon, uh, including some refilled of some old seasons. So make sure to check those out as well when they come out. Um, and check out the description below where you can find all of our audio podcast links, our other YouTube channels, our Patreon, our social media, and where you can get your merch, including but not limited to cup mug. And with all that being said, we are going to go ahead and get out of here. So cheers, Jack. Cheers. Woo.